Halloween and welcome to the very first Witches of Wellness podcast. I am Camille, the Empress, and I'm here with Brandy, the star. The star. We are dressed up like tarot cards today to celebrate Halloween. We've got a few days still, but we are actually having a party yes, today we are. at yep. our uh, studio collective um, to celebrate Halloween, and the theme is tarot. Um, so I am the Empress card, which uh, is all things love. Yeah. And the star, Brandy. Yeah, and the star is about hope, a renewed sense of hope and prosperity, renewed strength. Um, but what's interesting, too, is being tarot cards, and if anyone's familiar with tarot, um, the tarot cards have a reverse side, too. Yes, so. They do. Just like everybody else in tarot, there's duality. So Yes, there's always duality. Yes. Where there's darkness, there is light. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, today, so I said we're having a party. Um, we are. We're having just a little celebration at our office to um, just celebrate the season and just to be able to spend some time with each other um, and do fun and lighthearted things. So while I was at the office mm-hmm. setting up today, Two different times, I swore that one of you walked in, and I, to the point where I walked out and said hello both times, oh um, I heard what sounded like a door opening, um, but another time I heard what sounded like something falling. I went out and nothing had fallen, but um, we've actually thought for a long time that there's a ghost in our yes. office, and uh, so I think maybe they were just coming to visit because... If you don't know, um, the veil is thinning, and now is the time of year where the spirits are close at hand, and um, now's the time of year if you are going to hear a ghost or even see a ghost, it's right now. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) And just to preface that, um, two days ago, Camille and I were at our office and getting ready for our party and just talking about haunted objects. I don't dare (laughs) bring up (laughs) the name. We're not going to do that. (laughs) But all of a sudden we both looked down and I had um, a bag, just like a plastic bag. And all of a sudden the handles started just shaking, just vibrating weird. All by themselves. And we both stood there and watched it happen. (laughs) Yes. And we're like, could it be the vent? Could it be the? There no, was there nothing. There were no vents. There were, was nothing. No. Um, but yes, we we definitely have a spirit in our office, and we've always thought that it's a very kind spirit yes. and that it's watched over us. So absolutely. Um, so we're we're happy to share space with them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and and that is the thing is, you notice it more when you're alone there, just because yes. I mean it's, it's so quiet. quiet. Yes. And I had that happen several times a uh, real quick story um my friend was in there we were doing readings i i'm a psychic medium so you would think i'm used to this and it doesn't freak me out right. but when i see things move but she came out and she's like why did you knock on the door of the bathroom i'm like i didn't and she's like oh yeah i heard you knock on the door and whistle she goes, I thought that was weird, like you were trying to have me hurry up. And I'm like, no. Oh, my goodness. And so I just kind of left it at that. But Oh, it's, how funny. Yeah. Yes. I've had them. Um, actually, you know what? Another another great story about our ghosts that we have in our space. Um, there was one time I was actually in, in a very dark room working on a client. Um, I do. I'm an esthetician. I do skincare services. And I actually felt somebody put their hand on my shoulder. Oh, my gosh. And it was, you would think that that it would startle you, especially when you're in, like, a dark, quiet room. But it was actually very comforting. And so that's why I've always thought that our ghost is is just a really nice, kind spirit that's watching over us. I get that sense, too. Yeah. 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 So today, if those stories weren't spooky enough for you, we're actually here um, on our very first podcast, l- like literally, Brandy and I have yes. never done a podcast no. in our lives. <laughs> so we were like, hey, let's do a podcast dressed up. Because <laughs> we love that. Because we always need an excuse to dress up. Yes. So we're just going to do it the right way for Halloween. So mm-hmm. we dressed up. Um, so here we are. I hope you enjoy this podcast. 
Um, we're actually here today to tell you about some very spooky Halloween facts and some spooky ghost tales mm-hmm. and haunted locations. Yes. So, with that, let's get started. Mm-hmm. So, I have some spooky facts for you. Um, there, Some of them may be known, some of them may not, but... Um, Really, Halloween, um, if if you many of you might know this, you might not, it actually stems from um, the ancient Druids and Celtic festivals, um, and specifically Samhain, which is um, which is like our Halloween, but it was a festival that happened a long, long time ago. Um, and a lot of the customs that kind of started with that um, were eventually, carried on um, and kind of shifted and changed. Uh, When people came from England over to America, things kind of shifted and changed again. So interestingly, what's one of the party games that we do at Halloween? Um, Bobbing for apples? Yes, you got it. That that, and actually many of the rituals um, historically surrounding Halloween were actually involving romance and love oh. and courtship and finding a husband. Wow. Yes. So you don't really think about that the way that we do it now in America mm-hmm. um, with trick-or-treating and such. Um, but yes, bobbing for apples was originally um, a ritual that young women would take part in. And um, what they would do is they would put names In the apples. So they would like name an apple of their crush and then they would bob and try to catch that. And if they did, it was a sign that they were likely going to be married to their crush. Oh, Um, interesting. Yes. So that is where it originated from. And actually there were some other, um, other games kind of like that too. Whoever, whoever got an apple first uh, would have, would be the next person to get married um, so it's, so that actually like what we do for fun yeah. now, um, yeah. that's where the roots are is, um, in Britain, that's where they would try to find a mate. Um, yeah. interestingly too, they played another game called snap apple oh. and it sounds fun, but actually what it was, was, um, like a stick or like a broomstick, um, on one end was a burning candle. And on the other end was tied an apple, and they would spin the stick around, and you would have to try to catch the apple and not get hit in the face with oh. a lit candle. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I don't think we play that anymore. And no. I, I think I know why. I know. <laughs> but that's another interesting game wow. that was played. Yes. Yeah, so, fun fact about bobbing for apples. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, some of the other fun things that um, young ladies would do, um, a very common one actually was to throw a handful of hazelnuts into the fire um, with each hazelnut being marked as a certain young man, yeah. young gentleman, yeah. and throw them into the fire. If they popped open, that was not likely the man that she was to marry. It oh. was the one that burned into ashes that would be her beloved interesting for eternity and a side <laughs> note for eternity can we just do this lifetime <laughs> we only sign up for this lifetime now yes, yes. <laughs> um on a side note what does hazelnut represent i mean even today like what would you use hazelnut for um I would, I associate hazelnuts, and I know it's very different in America. Mm -hmm. Um, In Europe, the the usage of hazelnuts is a lot more than it is here, but I I associate that with Valentine's Day, actually. Like, I associate it with, like, chocolates and, yes, um, and, and, and love, too. I mean, really, it's, it's a, it's a lovely nut. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, I'm just wondering because like all the herbs 
you know, herbs and oh, oils right. and, yes. you know, fruits and like Absolutely. with that, they yes. represent something. So, right. I'm trying to think what hazelnut is. You know what? I'll have to look that up and, and yeah. maybe we can um, somehow like let people know later what that is because I can't yeah. think of it off the top of my head. Yep. Very interesting facts. Yeah. Yes. So there were tons of things like this. Some of the other ones were um, hanging wet sheets um, in front of the sunlight and you would be able to to see your face, the face oh. of who you were going to marry. Um, there was actually another uh, interesting one where a, a young lady would make a bowl of mashed potatoes with a ring inside the mashed potatoes, and whichever young gentleman was the one that got the ring in their mouthful of <laughs> potatoes creamy mashed potatoes yes this sounds like a choking hazard yes please don't try this at home don't try this at home yes that that's not safe but anyway um that would be who she was going to marry so there's tons of those um another really popular one is um going downstairs at midnight to look in the mirror in the dark and if you look you're supposed to be able to see the face of your beloved you will wed in the mirror so give it a try let's do that (laughs) but what if you see bloody mary in the mirror oh no (laughs) what do you do (laughs) i'm not marrying her (laughs) no i no that's did you ever play that as a kid yeah oh my gosh that you know what i always thought it was really fun but of course you know of course i did That was a fun game. Yes, but did you ever see anything in the mirror? You know, I don't remember. I know. That's um, not to get off track or anything, but in shaman training, yeah, <laughs> you that is an exercise you do is to let your gaze go in the mirror yes. and see, you know, what comes to you. Yes. Or scrying in a crystal ball yes yeah that's kind of what you do is you let your vision go hazy and yeah kind of see what comes to you yes exactly or in a candle you could do that like in a in a flickering candle flame flame. yes yes Yes, i've done that before and i've done the mirror before too actually we're going to be doing that tonight i have my magical mermaid mirror (laughs) oh my gosh and i brought an antique because we go antiquing candle holder it's like metal and an orange candle oh that's been lit goodness. and literally bought it from an antique shop. So nice. Yes. We'll see what happens. That's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I, this is just interesting because this is Camille and I every day. Like this isn't a show. <laughs> right. This is what we talk about every single day. <laughs> like, yes. This is our life. I mean, it's. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And this was just the perfect time for us to start this podcast, too. We do plan on bringing you more um, episodes covering all different kinds of wellness topics, um, spirituality, yes. um, and how that ties into your wellness, pretty much anything under the sun. And if you ever have recommendations or requests for things you'd like us to cover, um, we'd love to hear them. Um so, Absolutely. yeah. So I have a few more facts. Yes, I love them. <laughs> Just a couple more facts I'm going to throw at you, um, and then Brandy's going to take over. So our tradition of having a bonfire is a very ancient tradition, and it's something that the ancient Druids would would do during this time, Samhain, which was actually more, it was like a harvest celebration, it was a celebration of um, harvest and and the wheel turning to the darker times of the year uh, where the plants weren't growing, um, where the, the days were getting dark. Um, and that's what that celebration was for. So they would have large bonfires and part of what they would do to as an offering is they would throw animal bones into the fire. Ooh. And so originally, if you think of, of bones, bone fire, that's where we get bonfire is wow yes, from literally bones being thrown in the, these giant fires yes so that is where that comes from bonfire that's, is actually bone fire that's so interesting it is and actually they would wear um they would actually wear a lot of bones um traditionally um any any time they would be wearing bones and furs but especially for these festival celebrations they would wear um skull masks and and that was to kind of um, 
just pay respects to mm-hmm. to the ancients and to the celebration itself. So, wow. kind of a, yeah, so that's kind that's... of a cool one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love so that. So let me see here. Yes. I have a couple more facts. Let me see. I'm going to share <clears> one more. <throat> Um, I've got them on on the Empress's cell phone. Uh-huh. Um, let's see. I'll share one more because I had a bunch of them. I love listening to them. It's so fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a fun one. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll try to I'll try to squeeze in two more really quick. Okay. Okay, because these are both really good. So traditionally, people are afraid of spiders. Well, not traditionally, but many people are afraid of spiders. I'm mm-hmm. not, but. Um, it's, I'm over it. <laughs> okay. It's um, actually was traditionally thought that if a spider shows up on Halloween, that it is actually one of your ancestors <gasps> showing up. I believe so that. I do too. And so I've been on the lookout all day and I haven't seen one yet, but I'm hoping to. And actually it's really, it's really warm where we are now. It's mm-hmm. unusually warm for this part of October in Michigan, which is where we are yes. um, near Detroit. And, um, so there's a good chance, I think, that there's still some outside or, or there's probably some inside if they've already gotten too cold. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, no, now that you told me, I'm going to be on the lookout yes, as well. Yes, yes. Be on the lookout for that. Yes. So the last one I'll share before I turn it over to Brandy for her interesting stuff. Mm. Um, <laughs> fairies. So what do we think of fairies? Usually we like we think of fairies when we see them in movies like, oh, they're like, you know, happy, beautiful fairies and they are um but fairies also kind of have a dark side to them mm-hmm. and it was actually thought um in ancient times that fairies and historical times that fairies actually would capture you and take you to the underworld um they would because they were capturing the dead souls, and if you happen to be in the area, that they would take you there as well to the underworld. Wow. So that's a little known fact about fairies. <laughs> oh, and do all fairies look the same? Like you said, like you typically you we think of like Tinkerbell or Exactly you know. right, or like the 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 fairies from you know those types of movies. No, fairies all look very different. There are all different kinds of fairies. There are fairies that live in the woodlands. There are um, water nymphs that are like the fairy spirits of the water. Um, There's so many. There's so many out there. And it's actually pretty fascinating. Um, When my kids were younger, when they were little, um, we would read a lot about fairies and a lot about the different types of fairies. And they are... um, I believe in fairies. I do. I do. I believe in fairies. Yes. We both believe in fairies. So um, there's lots to learn. So maybe we'll do a whole show on fairies. You know, you really could. Because, I mean, people may have questions. Do you interact with fairies? Are all, you know, bad fairies, good fairies? Right. How do you protect your home from fairies? Yes. Yes. I I think we should. Maybe that will be our next one. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Oh, awesome! <laughs> I love it. So, oh well, that's all I have for interesting facts because I want to turn it over to Brandy, who's going to share some spooky real life tales. Ooh, yes, um, I do have some real ghost stories to share and some haunted places. Um, but first, I had one interesting fact that, as you were talking about that, I remember um, Cato from Crystal Treasures. Yes. Like I I would take a lot of his classes and he is phenomenal. Um he would tell us that the reason why um women were labeled as witches is because this is interesting. Um when a witch <laughs> was writing down her recipes or healing tinctures, mm-hmm. they would call them like baby's blood. Well, baby's Ah. blood was actually strawberries, you know, and they would do um, code, coded um, recipes like that. And so when it fell into the wrong hands, they're like, you're a witch, you know, you use baby blood. And we're like, no, it's strawberries. Um, That is amazing. I've never heard that. Yes. And then um, how um, these witches came to riding brooms was because at the end of the harvest during this time 
they would go out to the cornfield and they would get all the corn stalks as much as they could and they would put them between their legs and jump. And what they were doing is just honoring the earth and the land and showing the corn how high to grow next year. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So, of course, that it, you know, got turned around as you're a witch and you fly and you do all these things. But honestly, it was um, like the ancient Celtics and, you know, honoring the land and giving yes. thanks. And, um, right. but yeah, so that's just a little fun fact I learned. That's so. awesome. Thanks for sharing that. That's oh, really you're cool. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, okay. Just to preface, um, like I said, I am a psychic medium. Um, rarely, a couple times, I've encountered spirits, um, heard spirits, felt spirits, um, and we'll go first with the true ghost story. So, where I get it from is my mom. You know, my mom is very, my mom, my sister, my kids, my two daughters. We are all very psychic. Oh yes and very intuitive um it's very hard to have christmas at our house because we know the presents <laughs> that are being unwrapped. like quit it stop it so but anyway so my mom very you know she denies it she's like oh i don't want to you know see spirits and i don't believe in any of that stuff and so lo and behold there's always something happening at my mom's house and she tries to explain it away well one time, just a few years ago, her and my dad were on vacation. They were with a tour group of the senior citizens. <laughs> so, and they um, are in Florida now, but this trip was taking them to Savannah, Georgia. And as most of us know, Savannah is very haunted. The whole city is basically built upon a graveyard. I mean, you cannot dig without finding bones. Um, uh, so they're on their tour. They uh, toured the city, all's fine and well. So later on that night, they retired to their hotel room and they had two queen beds in their room. So my dad took a bed and my mom took a bed because my dad goes to bed super early. So my mom you know, getting ready for bed and she's watching TV and all of a sudden, like out of the corner of her eye, she sees, um, these two, two of them, <laughs> like spirits, like come in from the door and the way she described it is like, you couldn't make out features, but the outline of two people, spirits, and they were just like moving closer to her. And she's like, I'm not sleeping. I'm awake. And she's like, is it a shadow from the TV? And she's rubbing her eyes. And she said she propped herself up on her shoulder. And they weren't like walking. They were just gliding tall as a person. And they kept coming. And she's like, oh, my God, <laughs> what do I do? And so they kept coming, kept coming, and got right almost to the foot of her bed. And she all of a sudden just said, stop, get out of here. <laughs> She's like, I don't even know how I got the courage to say it. And what they stopped and backed up and went out the door. Oh, Not turn around, backed up and went out the door. And she wow. said she was so scared. She goes, I just wanted to put the covers over my head. I said, why didn't you, you know, get up and get in bed with dad? And she's like, I was so scared. And for her to admit that, and I asked her a million questions. I'm like, were they tall? Were they short? Like, could you see through them? And she's like, no, it was um, a shadow. But she said it was like a beige color, like a dark brown beige. Okay. You couldn't see through them. You couldn't make out. Wow. And she was, she kept saying is this the tv and they just kept getting closer and closer she's like i will never forget that so um trying to think of who it is i mean it could be a civil war soldier it could be you know but it was two entities so then 
The next morning, they go downstairs for breakfast, and sure enough, a lot of people are saying they heard things and oh, heard voices, wow. and one had their water on, and um, I so today I sent my mom a text to ask her, where did you stay? So I can, you know, let yeah. everyone know on the podcast, and um, it was the Holiday Inn in Savannah, like right in downtown. Oh, so wow. I'm sure other people have experienced things. Um, but yes, yes. Oh, so, that's spooky. Yes. And she could recall every detail. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. And you actually, one thing um, that you made me think when you were mm-hmm. telling that story that what your mom telling them to go away. Yes. Um, that is actually, if you ever feel like there's something around you that you don't want there that doesn't feel right, whether it's a ghost or energy or whatever, just say it out loud. Go away. I don't want you here. <laughs> yes. And that's the thing, you know, to remember that you are empowered to make them go away. It is scary um, because, you know, we don't understand it fully, um, but literally 99%, I would say, this is my own estimate, of the spirits, ghosts, entities that you run into are good. They may have just a message that they need to get across. Um, Unfinished business, things like that. Very rarely are you going to run into something super negative. It may happen, but if it does, reach out to someone. Reach out to us. We are not going to think you're crazy. So... Um, we're here to help. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, that's a great story. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> yes. And um, just over the years, more like true stories. Um, this is when I started out. I was working at Crystal Treasures. Yeah. Which is, which for people that might not know, that's, oh, um, yes. it's a local, very local to us, um, metaphysical and crystal store. Yes. Yep. In yeah. Auburn Hills, Michigan. You can look it up. And so um, it was in December, it was pouring rain. I don't know what happened, but I was so mad. I just remember being so mad. And um, I was standing against the door, like the wall or the doorway, like in a hallway. It wasn't that big. So I'm standing there and I'm just staring out the window and I'm just mad. I don't even remember now, but all of a sudden, I feel this on my shoulder. And I said, oh, excuse me, because I thought either Cato or Shaman Joe was, you know, coming through. And I look, nobody, nobody, nobody's there. And I, I remember that to this day. I mean, I've always, there, there's one other thing with that, with the store, which it's nothing negative. Because Marie, Cato, they sage and cleanse and clear all the time. So there's nothing, you know. um, But it was a Friday. Cato was working. Nobody in the store. I stop in. I think I had to get something. He's in the back um, little cubby room that they use for readings in the far back corner. And he's just pricing stuff. You know, nobody's in the store. So I walk in and I'm going to talk to him. And I walk right by the pendulums. Nothing's weird, nothing. And so I just start talking to him. And we're joking and laughing and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. And then I turn around to leave and I look. And all the pendulums are tangled. I kid you not. I would have noticed that when I walked by. And so I look at Kate and I'm like, was that like that? Did you do that? Did you know? He's like, no, probably just our ghost. Like, he laughs it off. Like, he just is like, yeah. but I would have seen that. Yes. That's spooky. So, like, things like that. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people, like, want to see a ghost and want to experience that. And I get a lot of people that come to me and, you know, I, I want to be a psychic medium. How do you do that? And, um. The younger kids want the downloadable app. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> Maybe you should create one. I know. <laughs> um, I would, but it's so individual. Right. You know, and. Everybody's so different. The, yeah. I'll give you the first 
three things if you would like to, you know, heighten your intuitive self. Um, the first three things you can do, very simple. Number one, listen, listen. Spirit is connecting with you all the time, with everyone all day long. Listen. If you see a cardinal in the morning and then you're driving to work and you see two cardinals in the tree and then a truck stops beside you and it has a cardinal on the truck, look up cardinal. That could be a sign from a relative. Um, It could be your spirit animal. So look up, you know, the strengths of cardinal. Um, Okay, so then number two, focus and ground. Once you're grounded, you're not scattered, you're centered, it makes it easier to listen and to receive messages. Number three, and this I would say, practice. Keep practicing and don't doubt. Your third eye is a muscle just like every other muscle in your body. It takes time and practice, and you'll start seeing your own personal rhythm of information that you receive from spirit. Like, you just, when I see two crows, I'm like, that's my sign. That's my sign. I know, you know, spirit's trying to tell me something. Listen. So just those things. Practice and trust what you get. Don't say, I want a sign. And they give you a sign, and they're like, "Mm, is that really a sign? Trust it. Right. And you'll get more. Yes. Or look for a signier sign. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that though. And yeah. and really like I think you make such a great point that everybody has this capacity in them. Yes. And everybody can do this. And and I know over the years that um that that I've practiced that more and more and and now, you know, I I do know when I get signs Mm -hmm. because they are specific and um and it I just I wish everybody understood that 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 they all have the capability to do that yes but you're right you just have to you have to stop you have to stop from your busy life Mm -hmm. and and just take take the time to keep your eyes open like literally keep your eyes open yes absolutely (laughs) eyes and ears yes and ears yes because there are so many ways to receive a message it could be a smell, it could be a sound, it could be the visual, like seeing the cardinal, it could be, you know, a tap on the shoulder. And like we said, if you're not comfortable with any one of those, say no. <laughs> yes. That's how I am. I'm like, okay, spirit, if I'm going to do this and I'm going to communicate with spirits, I do not want to see them. <laughs> I said, you got to give me a message another way. So now I just get images in my mind's eye. Yeah. But now I'm less afraid of the actual spirit. So I'm, you know, seeing more too. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Yes. And if you don't, and don't be afraid, right? Because like it, it is somebody, you know, trying to to reach out and to yes. contact you. Yeah, don't yeah. be afraid and um, trust your gut instincts. Yes. That's so important. That actually should have been number two or number one. <laughs> yeah. Trust your gut instinct. Yeah. You know, don't freak out and run. In. It's okay to be afraid, but your gut instinct is going to tell you, whoa, is this, you know, a, a negative situation? Right. You know, you know. You'll know. Yes. It's not just, you know, the fear. It's like you'll know where you're like, you just, there's other things in your body that's going to tell you this is a negative situation. Right. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know um, one of mine that I, a message that I get all the time is actually um, from my brother who has passed on. Mm -hmm. And I know that he's around me every time I hear free bird. (laughs) Oh, yes. Every time I hear free bird. I oh. know that he's there. Oh, my God. On the way here, I'm driving my one of my signs, license plates. It was bird. Oh, oh no way. <laughs> Although that this happens to Brandy and I all the time. Yes. All the is, time. This is us. Yep. Her and I, like, we're convinced that we 
we have lived other lifetimes together mm-hmm. because we have a lot of the same things that we like. Um, we often, very, very often, not today, obviously, but we will very often show up um, to the office wearing the same exact outfit. Yes. <laughs> same color, everything. <laughs> we did that the other um, day. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, right. We, yeah, we've, we've always been like that. Like, it's very strange. And people have actually um, thought that we were sisters. I yes. know, again, I know we look nothing alike right now. <laughs> I know. On our next podcast, <laughs> right. you we'll, will see. <laughs> yes, we'll probably look normal then. Yes. Um, so, but... yeah. And, and those things, too, like, just like what we were just talking about, like, those are signs that that we know we have that connection. You know, we have a spirit connection. And And think about people you know. Like, just think, you know, you probably won't even have to think real hard. Like, think about who your friends are and yes. think about, you know, things that you think were maybe coincidences. But, um, you know, in real life, like, you are probably part of a soul group together and you've traveled, um, you know, maybe many lifetimes together um, as as souls. And so it's stuff to really, you know, sit back yeah. and think about, like, your your best buddy, like, you you might have known them for more than just this life. <laughs> yes, and I have to add to that because this is very interesting, and I've been thinking about this lately. Um, my daughter, my oldest, Madeline, she is at Western, yeah. and she sent me a text, and she's like, Mom, you're not going to believe this. There's a girl in my group, my study group, and she was born on August 19th, 2001, you know, same year as Maddie, same hospital. Oh. They were in the same hospital room, or not room, same hospital yeah. floor, born, same time. Oh my gosh, that's so, so cool. what resonates is I have a theory that you have a soul group. Yep. You may not, she, they may be in a soul group. Right. Where they saw each other for a brief moment. They were together, being born, coming into this world, separated for 18, 19, 20 years, come back together. Right. Exactly. They are a study group. I'm sure then they will part ways again and maybe not come back in this lifetime. Right. But maybe another. So think about those people in your life that you have, you know reconnected with a high school friend yes um, right our childhood friend you know like oh we moved away from each other when we were six years old and now I was in the grocery store and I just ran into them yeah you see about those and I because I get so many stories all the time I really feel like you have this group yeah I do too yeah absolutely that would actually make a really good topic for yes a podcast it would yeah yeah so, yeah, we're kind of giving you a taste of some of the stuff that we talk about and probably will be talking about more. Um, Absolutely. Because, yeah, like we're um, just a little bit of background about us. We actually work together. Uh, Brandy and I work in an office um, with some other wonderful women. We're all independent business owners and um, we share space and we're all in some aspect of wellness um, and or healing. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to be talking a lot about on this podcast is like just different types of, of wellness, healing. Um, I mean, there's trillions of topics <laughs> I think we could talk about and we do have like trillions of ideas, literally. Um, yes. So yeah, but where can they find us? Maybe we'll tell them that. So right, if they want to yeah. ask us a question or they have a topic they want to let yeah. us know they want to talk about. Um, yes. You know what? Um uh, we have actually. I'll just throw out our websites right now, real yes. quick. We won't wait till the end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my website is autumnmoonbeauty.com, um, and Brandy, yours is um, soul7chakra.com. And yes, and I, my business, I am part of the Autumn Moon Wellness Collective. So that's what we kind of call ourselves yes. um, as a whole. So mm-hmm. all of our individual businesses make that up. Um, and we may actually have um, on this podcast, we may invite some of the other women that we um, that we work with oh, to yes. come in here with us because they're a lot of fun. They are phenomenal. We have tons of fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, those are spooky stories. And um, I love ghost stories and I love being scared. Yes. And I love all of that. Like, I just, 
love it. And yes. So this time of year is like one of my favorite times of year, but I like to be scared all the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Me too. Um, I know one of my favorite places to go to is Mackinac Island. <gasps> Yes, and Br- yes, Brandy's done some cool stuff up there. Yes, and that island is amazing. Um, before I get into that, Camille has ties to the island, too. I do, I do. It's... My grandmother, my my paternal grandmother, actually grew up on the island. Yes, yes. so um, very, I have to give a shout out, though, to Todd Clements, because he has Haunts of Mackinac on the island, yes. and I have been on the tour many times. Um, I just love it. It's fascinating. That's you get the history. Um, you hear the ghost stories. You uh, you feel it. That's the thing about that island to me is you feel yes. that energy, and maybe not even um, the spiritual aspect of it, but the historical yes. aspect of it. And you can. You just sense it and feel it. And um, a lot of the places, a very popular place that is haunted is Mission Point. Ooh. Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. And really? yes. And um, I just had to say it out loud because that's where I'm getting my information is from Todd. And he has um, wow. some books out too. So getting from his books. Um, there is a spirit that is known as Harvey at Mission Point, and he likes to hang out um, in the theater there. Okay. And many times, um, just going with personal friends, we would take our ghost equipment <laughs> and, and go to the theater. And we did get some readings. Um, we got some pictures. Um, nothing that we can definitely say, okay, this this is Harvey or... And who Harvey is, is they believe that in the 70s, he was a college student there. And it is said that he committed suicide. Um, But through investigations and that, um, Todd and other people, it may not have been a suicide. So that's very interesting. So read into that too. Um, But if you do go to Mission Point, you do have, you know, feel free. I mean, I would maybe... Let somebody know that you're going into the theater, but you can actually sit in one of the seats that is designated Harvey's seat. That's so cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is so cool. Yes. And um, right at Mission Point, there's also um, the sound stage. And that is said to be haunted as well. Like you can feel energy and... Um, Very cool. Yeah. So, but seriously, you can look up Mackinac Island and every spot on Mackinac is haunted. Oh, for (laughs) sure. You can feel it when you step on the island. You absolutely can. Yes. What is, um, we have just, just like one more minute. Okay. What, um, what is your favorite haunted city? Oh my gosh. One minute. (laughs) I know, it's hard. (laughs) I know. Um, Actually, I would have to say it is Mackinac. I love that. Oh, Um, for sure. For sure. Hands down. Yes. Um, But I do love Savannah, too, because it's just, it's mystical. It's magical. It's mystical. Oh, I'm losing my stuff. That's all right. (laughs) But I can tell you, any city you go to has history, (laughs) so. True. Every, right. There's, there's ghosts everywhere. There's ghosts everywhere. Everywhere, but but, but I, yes, I was gonna say where I want to go. The most haunted city where I would love to go is um, Estes Park to the Stanley. Which, um, if you don't know, that's where Stephen King went and stayed, and he wrote The Shining. Oh, cool! And they did close it down to ghost tours. They used to allow that. I mean, oh, but wow. um, people have caught evidence from there, pictures, um, sounds. Um, But yes, I would love to go there and experience that. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. 
Yes. Well, we only have just like a couple seconds, so I think we'll probably yes. say farewell for today. We got to go to our party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so thanks so much for listening. We appreciate you being here for this first time around. Yes. And thank you so yes. much. And we will um, we'll catch up with you again soon. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.